Greetings out there. It's David Duford from Final Expense Agent Mentor at FEAgentMentor.com. And chances are you're watching my video today because you are looking for some basic information on final expense direct mail leads. If that's what you're looking for, you have found the right video to get a basic direct mail final expense 101 education on all things related to final expense direct mail leads. And more specifically, what you're going to find in this video is a lot of information on what exactly direct mail leads are, some basic differences in the types of leads, why we use them, and then some recommendations on vendors that you can use, whether you're an agent of mine or not, to employ the direct mail business that I definitely endorse. I'll make one more note before we begin the formal presentations and start zipping through the slides. There are going to be some links uh, throughout this article and this video that will do a more detailed, thorough, and advanced job of explaining some of the concepts and the more uh, details that need more detail. So if you're advanced in this business and you know direct mail to an extent, but you're looking for some more information, scroll down to find those links and then you'll find that as you go through it, you'll begin to get more information about final expense leads and some more specific uh, answers to some of the questions you may have. Okay, now, so here's the overview. Again, we're going to introduce myself here shortly, give you the basics on final expense direct mail leads, why they work so damn well, give you the best practices for working those direct mail leads, as well as optimal areas to generate direct mail and then I'm going to tell you how I approach direct mail with my agents again whether you are an agent or not under my hierarchy and under final expense agent mentor I'm going to share with you anyway what I would do if I get a brand new agent in my agency and how I get him going from the beginning <clears throat> and then lastly I'm going to end with some action steps you can take right now at the very end of this to get started on a direct mail final expense lead program so just a little about myself if you don't know who I am. My name is David Duford. I'm the owner and operator of Final Expense Agent Mentor at feagentmentor.com. I've actually been selling final expense and have been licensed as a life insurance agent since 2011. Uh, and still to this day, I produce personally in the field, not to the large extent like I used to because I'm now, since 2013, training and mentoring agents to replicate the process that I follow to become successful in the final expense business. What I focus on and what makes final expense agent mentor totally unique than a lot of the other opportunities out there is that really and truly my bread and butter, what I strive to work with are new agents to final expense. I want to work with people who have the tenacity, the hard work effort, and the desire to succeed in this business model, but are new and don't know quite where to start. They don't know exactly how to approach it, and just as important, they don't want to screw up to a certain extent that it's going to cost them so much that they may have to exit the business prematurely. So somebody like that who has the stuff, who has the X factor, works well with my organization. And, and this is the last of my little... Um, blurbs I'm going to give, but if you're interested at any point now or later in what it is that I do and would like to find out more information, go to my website. It's feagentmentor.com. <clears throat> and, and even if you're not interested in joining me, I've got a ton more free final expense training. Uh, no opt-ins, no nothing. Just check it out. It's my, com my gift to agents to help them learn this business better and have more training and uh, guidance. Now, what exactly are final expense direct mail leads? Well, Whenever I say final expense direct mail leads, and I'm assuming you're new if you're listening to this most likely, what I'm referring to is what's called business reply card mailers. If you can picture a postcard, and you, it's just the kind of postcard you'd pick up on vacation, you send it back to somebody you loved, and you say, hey, I'm down here in Hawaii, right? That's not what I'm talking about. That's just a typical postcard. I may refer to postcards or direct mail in that, in that type of, of way, <clears throat> but when I say that, what I am referring to is a mailer piece that goes out to our intended recipient of which they read through. And if interested, detach the bottom portion of the mailer, fill it out, postage paid of course, and then returns it back to the mailhouse. And then we get 
those returns, scan to us via email, or in some cases, mail to us as a hard copy to go actually physically see these people in person, unannounced, to get an appointment on a spot or to call over the phone in, a, in advance to set up an appointment. This is a bread and butter typical final expense lead. And whenever I mention final expense, and ever you hear other agents mention final expense direct mail leads, 99.9% .9 of the time, this kind of lead is what they're referring to. Now, there are different methods, which we'll get into more specifics later on, to actually generate direct mail leads. Okay? The old-fashioned way is to do what's called a pay-per-thousand rate. Okay, you call up a mail house, which I'm going to give you some vendor references at the very end of this conference call. You order a thousand pieces. It usually runs 400 to 450, and then whatever you get back is what you get back. There's a huge problem nowadays in the final expense field. While the old-fashioned method is not a good idea, which relates to the second option, this is something that I have all of my agents do, uh, with the exception of a few places. I work with a vendor that gives us a price guarantee on our leads. So it's like you're buying an option saying, look, I'll buy the leads. I know I'm going to get the number in, but I'm also saying that my price is going to be fixed. So I don't have to pay more on average for my leads. Great thing about that is your price point is guaranteed. You know what to expect. You don't have to worry about paying more than the preset price point. This is very important, especially in, in very heavily saturated final expense markets. If you don't do this, you usually pay out the nose for your leads, and it's really a pain. And again, like I said at the bottom here, it depends where you are in the country, and we'll get into that a little bit further. So why do direct mail leads work so well? Well, first of all, uh, several reasons. And the, one of the reasons is there, direct mail doesn't have a do not mail list yet. You know, you put enough of these uh, socialists in power, who knows what will happen. We won't be able to sell anybody. But as of right now in 2016, there is no do not mail list. Therefore, anybody that we have information on within the typical ranges for leads, which is usually 50 to 85, sometimes a little better than that if you get uh, an age filter applied to that. <clears throat> but you can mail everybody in that age range and the income range. So there's no opt-outs or anything like that, like there is with the telemarketing rules, which will only allow you to market perhaps even just 20% of the total population of people within that age and income range. So you're going to find your ability to concentrate in an area, even in smaller towns, is so much better than just using telemarketed leads. Because the telemarketed leads, if I can drop 10,000 mailers in a county where that's all the people there are, I'm probably going to get back 100, 150 leads, whereas if I call on those people, I may only have access to 2,000. 20% of 10 is 2,000. And I may only get 5 leads, or only 15 or 20 leads, a fraction of the lead response that I would get if I was getting direct mail. <clears throat> now, the engagement level, and this is another reason why direct mail so well works so well, the engagement level is much higher than other leads. You see, with Direct mail leads, you have to picture how the people receive the lead. If you can imagine Mildred, she's 70. She's walking out to the mailbox. She's opening up. She sees this card. She sees something that sparks her interest. She sits down at the table. Maybe she just reads it right there at the mailbox. Starts to read through the card. Reads through it. She thinks about it. She thinks about maybe, I've been thinking about buying more life insurance. Maybe this is the time. Maybe this is the moment of where... I take the next step towards really seriously buying something. She thinks, but she puts it down. She goes and does something else. She comes back to it. She reads through it. She wants her husband to look at it. He looks at it and says, yeah, that looks good. Go ahead and fill it out and send it back. So she fills it out, walks it back out to the mailbox. It's the next day or the day after, and then it's gone. What's happened here is a level of engagement that's not forced by a telemarketer. It's not forced by a salesman that because of the interest that the prospect has in the card, their level, usually, if they return the card, their level of interest is measurably better as a percentage of the total lead sent out versus a telemarketing lead. That means they remember it better, so when you show up, they know what you're talking about. When you call them, they know what you're talking about more often than not. And many more times, the closing ratios are a lot higher for direct mail for that very reason. I think the engagement level factor is the biggest reason why direct mail 
is much better on consistency and quality than a, pretty much every other lead. Which goes to the point here at the very bottom. I'll skip this uh, next bullet and come back. Virtually all top producing agents use direct mail leads as their primary source of leads. This is important to understand. Brian Tracy said that success leaves clues. And the bottom 10% who got smart simply asked the top 10% what I can do get, to get to the top 10%. Because there's no buddy reinventing the wheel in the final expense business, I promise you. They may make it sound like they are, but they're not. What they're doing is a duplicatable process based off of purchased leads and hard work and hopefully access to multiple carriers. That's the final expense agent mentor philosophy behind this business. But I don't have a corner on that. The good agencies out there follow the same thing and the system itself is simple and it's easily duplicatable with the right person and the right approach to generating the leads. But if you look at the top 10% Again, to find out what the top 10% are doing in final expense, they're all doing this. They're doing exactly what I'm talking about, business reply cards. And that must mean there's something to it and that it must actually work to some extent. And then the last bullet point here I, I skipped over, when you door knock with, with direct mail leads, another great uh, ability that you get to leverage is the fact that you show them what they sent you. You know, in, in essence, I tell my agents, they solicited you. These people know what they're doing with these cards when they fill them out. Don't listen to them saying, oh, I forgot. I don't know what this is about. They know exactly what happens when they fill a card out and send it back. They're 70 years old. They're 60 years old. They've lived such a long life and have gotten so many solicitations. Don't even attempt to tell me that, they don't, that they're going to say, oh, I thought this was free. Or I didn't know you'd come out. You know, come on. That's, that's BS, right? So the point is, is you get to show them and say, hey, look, I'm here because you sent this in. And I need five minutes to show you what you requested. So I'm a little blunt on, on the recording here. I'm much nicer when I'm in front of a prospect, of course. But the point remains, you have a physical piece of proof that they requested you to give them the information. Moving on now. So what are the best practices of working direct mail leads? Okay, so you got to make it your goal every single week to see every single final expense direct mail lead within the first seven days of getting the leads. The reason is is that the most successful producers do whatever it takes to get in front of these leads and to find out if they are going to buy or if they're not going to buy. And every single day that passes that you don't make a sale to those leads, some other guy who's doing what we do has a chance to shoe in on you and make the sale out from under your feet. So when you do show up, oh, you're sitting on your laurels and you missed your opportunity, man. And in this marketplace, with the competition becoming more and more heavy and concentrated, time is of the essence. You have got to get out there, you have got to work, and you've got to see these people. And so the best agents, the best practices are making sure that it's done as quickly as possible. Now, if you're new, my recommendation is to only door knock leads for maximal return on your investment. Phoning, setting appointments over the phone, is a completely different skill set. You don't have body language. You don't have uh, a handshake, eye contact, the things that make the human communication experience more fuller and richer. You don't have that over the phone. So it, it takes time to develop phone phoning capabilities. And as a rule, I really prefer my agents to take their leads, especially if they're just getting 20 a week. They can go see all 20 easily during the day, over three or four days, no problem. But the more door knocks you're going to do, the more, pa the more return on your investment you're going to see relative to other lead types. So bottom line, my recommendation for you, see the people face to face. It's easier for someone to slam the phone down on you than it is to slam the door in your face. So the outcome is a lot more appointments and a lot more sales than you would if you just phoned. <clears throat> and if you do phone, if you have phoning experience, there's nothing unique necessarily about calling on leads than it is from any other business to business or business to consumer market. The same scripts apply. If you're good at it, make sure you still door knock between appointments because not everybody picks the phone up these days. And that's a serious growing issue is that there's heavy screening of phone calls. Okay, so make sure when you door knock, 
especially when you door knock, you print off a copy of each direct mail lead that you ordered. Again, to show these people you're here because they sent the card back. And then lastly, keep all your leads you happen not to get in contact with, okay? Because the shelf life direct mail leads just for some reason tends to be a heck of a lot better than what we see with telemarketing leads. I have routinely sold leads that are six months old, 12 months old. I know agents that do the same thing. So you always keep those old leads filed away, keep an Excel file to call on them, keep them in a paper file, but don't throw them away. Always take them back out when you're working in a specific county or zip code and try, them on, try on them again or just drop by and see them one day and say, hey man, you sent this off a long time ago. Many times the people, nobody saw them. And so if you're the first one there, a lot of times you'll get the sale. Okie doke. Now, how to pick areas to target direct mail leads. All right, so very common question, very good question. I can tell you my opinions have changed, have gone back and forth the last five years. <clears throat> now that I've seen different marketplaces uh, and different agents work in different situations, I can tell you with certainty what I'm about to tell you is the case and the best practices for generating leads. Okay, so first of all, if you can picture a low income area, you know, maybe an older neighborhood, single story homes, brick homes, um, single wides, double wides out in the country, if you will, um, subsidized housing. These are places where there are low income areas, but there are very high opportunity areas to sell final expense. Reason being is because, let's face it, people who buy final expense don't make a lot of money and don't have a lot of savings, if any at all. So we need to target the higher opportunity areas that make sense to the kind of people that we're gonna sell to. So at, as the, the further define what I mean by low income areas, for example, poor working class communities, Rust Belt communities, uh, inner city communities are fine. Small town America, if you go out an hour, hour and a half from where you live and they may have one or two lights, that's perfect. Rural areas are also great to target into for final expense leads. So anywhere where there is just a general lower income economic scale is, is excellent. Do not, now this is really the only thing I say do not do, okay? Do not target middle and high income areas and try to stay out of what I call bedroom communities. If, for example, I live in Chattanooga, and there's two specific communities for a fact that are very wealthy for the most part. There's obviously pockets of poor, but if you drop mail, mail there, you know the, the income filters really segment out a lot of the wealthier people, but it's not perfect. A lot of people report a zero dollar you know income to the government, but they are you know uh, dirt rich or they're millionaires but not on an income statement. Okay, so if you drop mail in, in these two communities in Chattanooga, you're going to get people to send cards back. But when you get there, you're going to just shrug your shoulders and smack yourself in the face because you're sitting in a three or four or five hundred thousand dollar home where they've got retirements, pensions, Medicare supplements, and the last thing they really even cared about buying is a burial insurance plan because it doesn't make sense. So you know, yeah, I know you ask, well, why would they send the card in? Well, they do because they do, and I want to stay away from that. So the high income areas, I stay away from. The bedroom communities would be more of a white collar, outside suburbia type area. Those, in my experience, are not very good. I've had hit or misses there. I'm again, going back to my personal experience, I can think of two areas between Chattanooga and another town I live in, or I should, I should say I worked in. Same kind of concept. Probably would be perfect for, for a Medicare supplemental type of sale, but not for um, final expense. You need to stick with poor people. You need to stick with poor communities because those are the people who need what we sell because the other ones may be interested, but they don't have the urgency once they show them a price. Okay, So just some personal preferences here. I prefer to order final expense direct mail leads about an hour outside of big cities. Okay, What I have found about two years in is an hour outside of the big city. Again, Chattanooga is not huge, but it's not small. But an hour outside of Chattanooga, I've got great access to rural areas, small towns. The people got nicer. 
people weren't as mailed as often. Um, you know, uh, I sold better. I I personally enjoyed it better, and and I'd wish I'd done it a lot sooner. Now, yeah, it's a pain to drive that far, but my experience dictates a better overall quality. And one of the secrets, I guess, if it is a secret, but I'm telling you what it is, is when I recruit agents, they say, "Look, man, we're sending you out into the country because the country is bar none much better quality wise." usually what you'll find in a metro type of environment as far as just enjoyability factor and and more consistency okay so lastly most vendors will allow you to exclude zip codes even if you don't want to target certain areas again if you're familiar with an area you live in but you don't want to work x area because the income's too high or you don't want to work y area because people get shot there every other day totally get it Vendors, including the one we work with at Final Expense Agent Mentor, will allow you to exclude those areas. Let me give you an example of Crossville, Tennessee. It's a very interesting town. It's located uh, halfway between Knoxville and Nashville uh, in a county called Cumberland County. It's really interesting because there is two huge <clears throat> um, retirement communities. Lots of people from the northwest, sorry, northeast. Uh, you know, Rust Belt areas that have worked for the car manufacturers all retired here, and they all show an income of zero to fifty thousand. But when you get there, they're 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 set. They've got their investments done. They're more of a an, a retirement financial planner type of lead, maybe annuities or some other exotic products. But final expense is just stupid. It doesn't make any sense for this particular type of market. And I remember working up there and running 15 or 16 appointments in a row. Everybody saw me. It was unusual because usually I get some no-shows. Everybody saw me, and nobody was interested. And it was really disheartening and frustrating. And I, I vowed never again to go back up there. But it was interesting because the zip codes, if you looked on the map, the zips, if you excluded the zips, everywhere else in the county was normal like rural Tennessee. And I did fine in those areas, but when I got into those zip codes, of course, I got tons of leads back from them. They were complete garbage. So the moral of the story here is that, <clears throat> you know, part of this process is a, a vetting process when you buy your final expense leads. You're not always going to know which areas work best and which areas aren't good. But once you do know it, you want to make sure that you start tweaking your campaign to stay out of the lower opportunity areas, like middle class retirement areas and higher. Okay. <clears throat> so, how Final Expense Agent Mentor recommends you buy and work direct mail leads. Priceless information here. All right. If you live in historically low response areas, you should always buy fixed price direct mail final expense leads. Period. Here's why. Final expense, as I mentioned earlier, is becoming more saturated with an ever-increasing amount of agents entering okay it doesn't mean that it's more competitive per se and that may not make sense because a lot of the time the first person to show up buys they're not shopping around and it's not a price war between you and the competition but what happens is everybody and their mother is sending off some form of direct mail postcard or direct mail business reply card mailer so everybody uses similar leads and when our recipients are swamped from 20 years ago they only got two a month and now they get eight a month seriously it's that high the chances are lower right that they're gonna actually send the card back you sent in okay so what happens is low price I'm sorry low response is an inverse to high price not because the leads particularly better it's just that's how it turns out and and like I said here in this next line if you don't go fix price in the high concentration of final expense areas you're gonna pay buku bucks for your leads and I've got a video linked here you can check it out and in, in the YouTube description or in the article if you're reading the article transcription um, my one dumb mistake that cost me twelve thousand in commission uh, because I attempted to trial a per thousand mailer to see if it was any good so the get, best thing to do next thing when you're actually work so so bottom line what are those areas um, I'll get to it in a second you want to start with 15 to 20 leads a week. Again, recommendation here. If you're a new agent of mine, you're going to be door knocking those leads. If you've got experience phoning, then go ahead and phone. But I want you to door knock the leads because you're just going to get better results that way. 
if you have a problem or just can't set appointments if you've got a full-time job and you're starting fi final expense part-time or if you just hate calling like I did hire my appointment setter I partner with a group it's this is the one thing that's exclusive to my agency I've got a very skilled group of, of callers that are excellent at final expense appointment setting and uh, for a fee they'll be happy to help you my preference is to use a lead that says life insurance somewhere on the card now we're gonna go into a video about what uh, or you're gonna get a link shortly about which mailer is the best one to use <clears throat> you can click that link now it's gonna be in the, the subject matter of the body copy of the uh, YouTube video or it's linked in the article but the point is is that there are some variations on what a card can say because of the saturation effect mentioned earlier many of them are now offering bribes like Walmart cards uh, there's one lead that says that you can cash a five dollar check if you deposit this lead in your bank account it's, it's literally a check uh, there's another lead that doesn't say anything about life insurance or final expense on it so there is a vanillaization of leads in order to increase response rates but there is an effect to that and you got to be very careful I, I all else equal life insurance listed on the card generally does a better job getting people who want to buy life insurance okay so um, new agents definitely use a card that says life insurance and then once you get comfortable with the process and you see results you get kind of dialed into a lead program look unless you're completely happy with the income you're making off of 15 or 20 leads which some people are I push my agents out of their comfort zone to, to do 30 to 40 leads a week if they want an income of 150,000 or more you're gonna have to probably work around 30 to 40 leads a week it's not a six-day week by any stretch especially for using appointment setter you should be able to do all that in four days flat so bottom line the goal is to scale up once comfortable into an income range and production range that meets your income goals back to the uh, high concentration areas the best response areas tend to be the Pacific Northwest Washington Oregon Idaho northern Midwest you know let's say Kansas and north um, also Michigan is a great response state as well as parts of the Northeast especially as you get into Boston Connecticut uh, New Hampshire Vermont Maine those are all higher response areas and in those cases if you live in that area and you're my age and I'm going to tell you to work with one of the vendors I'm going to provide on this next page because there's no reason to go fixed price because at the end of the day you're gonna miss and still get the same advantages um, of leads and actually they turn around faster in many cases and even our fixed price program not a big not by big stretch but that helps a little bit with the funding of the leads the key behind buying final expense direct mail is a consistent standing order of leads each and every week this is something I try to impress upon all my agents buying an order here buying an order there isn't going to cut it in the long run you have to burn the bridges if you really want to see success in this business if you really want a six-figure income you have got to produce a a consistent steady flow of leads and you've got to be willing to pay for consistent steady source of leads all of my agents that write 15 to 20,000 or more a month all have a consistent source of leads through me and they're buying every week like clockwork and so should you as a new agent and like I said earlier we do the fixed price mailers if I didn't mention above uh, if you don't live in those states you're gonna probably want a fixed price mailer um, I have an excellent vendor a great relationship with them they're exclusive to us they're not available freely to an individual agent in most circumstances and the results are fantastic they do the job they do it consistently well and they're the kind of people I like to work with so just wanted to throw that out there alrighty alright action steps how to get started with direct mail leads and some vendor recommendations <clears throat> so pick a vendor if you like direct mail you like what you see pick a vendor so the lead connections is a great place to start okay Chris Etheridge is the guy who runs it he is service oriented you do pay a premium for his mailers and you but in exchange you're gonna deal with a very reputable and honest person who does the job I highly recommend Chris and truth be told if there was a way to get fixed price from Chris I would do all my business with him even if I had to pay a buck or two more because their service level is absolutely great 
So definitely recommend the lead connections. Go to that website. Tell them Dave Duford referred you. I don't make any money off of these guys anyway, but they're just my way of saying thanks to these guys that have helped me out. Jen Marco is another one. Uh, they're the low price leader for mail. I haven't had any service problems with them. I did the, the dumb mistake video. Uh, I used Jen Marco. They did a good job. Didn't see any problems with them. It's just response rates suck, but they can't control that. They're $400 per thousand. Uh, so if you're in one of the low response, I'm sorry, high response areas, one of these two vendors will work fine for you. And then um, one thing to do in the meantime, it takes about three to four, eh, really more like four to five weeks to get your direct mail. Uh, you don't want to sit around and do nothing in the meantime. You can easily buy telemarketed leads or age direct mail leads in the interim just to keep you busy, keep you going, doing something. Kind of test the water on cheaper leads before you know you feel like you might blow a fresh lead, even though that really doesn't happen. The, the whole idea is to get you going to do something while you wait on the leads to come in. And then lastly, whatever you do, and I'll, it's worth mentioning again, the biggest thing here is to stay consistent with your orders for direct mail, final expense leads. If you're not consistent, your results are not consistent. So the best thing I can tell you is, look, be prepared to buy leads weekly. Don't even get involved in this business if you want to dibble dabble a little bit because I promise you you're going to fail out and you're going to think oh this business sucks the truth is you didn't give it the ample uh, amount of attention to set it up in the right way so bottom line if you're going to do this whether it's for me whether it's somebody else whether it's on your own buy leads consistently have a standing order of how many you want set it and forget it and depend upon yourself to go out there and find the business in between the leads to make sure you're paying for your leads. So that concludes this video on final expense direct mail leads. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope that you find the links that I've provided uh, on more explanation of different variables of final expense direct mail useful to you. If I can do anything for you, you know how to reach me. Go to my website, go to the contact page and do the submission form. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed it. Take care.